Okay. Great. Anyways, I'll start getting started and just come up with a couple of house cleaning issues. First of all, I want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tommy Lee. Uh, I basically am your local U.S. manufacturer representative of Fanville. Uh, I basically run North America for Fanville. And uh, attached to this go-to webinar uh, meeting is a, an item called handouts. And for the audience that are just signing on now, you can go over to your handout section and be able to download your soft version of this printout. So there's no need to take notes. Uh, you could download a soft copy and follow me along there, or you could just copy the share screen, but I provided a good vehicle uh, for you to be able to download this presentation. Um, for some of the background and people are, are trickling in, uh, Fanville sells SIP intercom as well as telephone solutions, and I'll get more into detail on that. For those who want to actually contact me uh, post this webinar, my contact information is shown to you right now on the screen. Uh, feel free to call me on 925-315-8950. Uh, you can send inquiries directly to sales at fanville.com, or you could just send me a direct email at tommy, T-O-M-M-Y dot L-E-E -E at fanville.com. Okay, great. Uh, let's go ahead and let's get started. Um, for those who have actually followed uh, a lot of my webinars in the past, I always tend to start off with this slide that shows uh, the entire spectrum of what Fanville brings, what solutions Fanville brings to the audience. Uh, historically, I've always focused in on uh, business phones here, which is a big segment of what Fanville does. And Fanville has been in the market for many, many years. Uh, we do lots and lots of uh, business phones as well as OEM opportunities in this given space. But in addition to business telephones, uh, we also sell hospitality solutions. Uh, this is just a partial list. We sell far more uh, items within this quantity, but kind of want to categorize the different market segments that we address into. But what I will focus most on in this section is uh, the uh, intercom section here. Uh, this is uh, this intercom section represents a large part of the Fanville business. And the great news about both of these solutions, you're going to find out why. For those who know about our phone solutions, you're going to realize how well our intercom solutions integrate well with our phones as well as many other phones as well in the marketplace, as long as they are SIP. Now, for those who don't understand what SIP is, it really represents session initiation protocol. You know, what does that really mean? It just means that as, as a standard language, if any opportunity or any device that speaks SIP, you'll be able to plug one PBX or, or a hosted switch to another SIP device, and you should have total, um, you know, compatibility between the two. You know, it's sort of like, you know, you don't have to think twice about plugging or, or when I speak English, everybody tends to understand my language. You know, that could be another way of form of SIP. These all devices will plug into SIP players. Now, the great thing about all of these different uh, endpoints is that Fanville also hands out to its partners an FDB, FDMS and FDPS solution, which really is a management system. And what that does is that allows all of our partners to be able to download specific templates into our phones, into the uh, intercom systems as well. So what that does is that also speeds up your employment uh, in, into the project space. So all of these units combined really reflect one unit uh, of it all. So what do we do? We focus on endpoints. Uh, we don't necessarily have a PBX solution for the most part. But we do we devote a lot of our effort and resources into making our phones as well as our intercoms fully compatible with all of the large PBXs and posts and switches that exist out in the system, out in the marketplace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at providing a quick overview of what the SIP intercom and door access solutions are that Fable provides give you as well as an intercom and door access application. You know, you start to say, wow, where do these things go? And you're actually, you'll be surprised on where these things actually show up in the marketplace. 
and I'll open up a Q&A session. Now in questions and answers, everyone here actually is, uh, is actually muted. And if you do have a question by any means, go to your questions uh, window, put in your questions as you want, and I'll go ahead and try to answer as many questions as I can at the Q&A session. So, you know, even though the webinar may stop, I'll stick around as long as I can to answer as many questions as possible. Now, beyond these three items that I'm going to present now, I want to also inform the audience that in the near future, we're also going to release sort of a three-stage training program for our intercoms as well. Um, we realize that this is kind of an overview where you can sort of see where, where and where these intercoms as well as these door access points fit. But following behind it, we're also in preparation and rolling out sort of a multi-stage training program that's going to be uh, displayed through the website that will give an audience who wants to go do a deeper dive into how do we actually deploy and implement these solutions. So that will shortly follow. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So we'll go ahead and talk about the FanDuel intercom and access solutions. One of the items I wanted to just categorize is that we actually support a wide spectrum of intercom as well as door phones, SIP paging access points and monitors. This is typically at the endpoints and typically where a lot of the voice and video communication technology touches the human being. And what that means is in terms of intercom, you have items with single key, dual keys, door access points where you have door phones, where you can go up to a multi-dwelling unit, be able to punch in a key code, be able to access. We have uh, RFID access uh, readers as well, so that if you happen to be in an office or in, an, or in another environment, what you can do is de de deploy access keys so that people that don't have to do it can just swipe their card and they can gain access as well. In addition, we also have items that are sort of industrial strength as well as high temperature type or outdoors uh, implementations that have video and don't have video as well. Some have rain guards and, and, and meant to take abuse in really high use public uh, uh, applications and projects. We have a new uh, thing coming out that's going to actually have a little mini display. Sometimes many people who push on buttons like to see feedback. So depending on what your access point is, we will go ahead and have an endpoint solution that fits your SIP solution that you're going to deploy. Beyond that, we also have a SIP paging unit. This is a PA2. It's sort of uh, a secret adapter that allows a lot of people to be able to implement and be able to, to retrofit or upgrade devices that were once analog and make them SIP compliant. I'll get to a little bit more about that in the future. Okay, and one of the things that we're bringing on soon is monitors. Now, a lot of what these items that you see here are typically outdoor access points, things that you're able to see when you gain, before you enter into the home or before you enter into the office. But what we're doing now is we're exploring developing monitors so that when you're inside the office, whether it's a home, you can actually see monitors and, and with a simple push of a key, be able to communicate with whoever's outside and have them come in uh, accordingly. So I'll get into all of these items uh, very short. Now I can't help but think, but talking about intercoms is to make me think back in history saying, when do these things really do? And I have to put in a little bit of humor where the first intercom that I'm aware of when I was a young child is the bat phone. When you think about it, this is a pretty ingenious device where you know, the, the, the actual, you know, commissioner pushed one button in his office and be able to call Batman. And when you think about these phones ringing, it actually had a lit thing, because I remember this phone used to light up. You know, I'm pretty sure many people may know this phone considering what their age is, but nonetheless, it was a pretty neat unit. But when you think about it, it actually is red. It did have a ringer and you had a one-to-one -one connection over likely an analog uh, light. Not a bad situation, but if you use that, this situation doesn't exist with the bat phone, but probably exists in many organizations today. And when you upgrade from an analog into what we call a SIP connection, which is really sort of the default business protocol uh, businesses today, they'll likely be connected by SIP. And so we provide the endpoints as well as the adapters to enable this retrofit upgrade to go from what was once an analog connection into a SIP-based 
intercom that either has one button, two buttons with and without video. Now I told, I mentioned earlier that my focus is going to be on intercom, but since I, I sort of brought out this red bat phone, I thought it would might I might want to share with you that we also have a red Fanville F5U as well, just to kind of sort of do parallelisms that we have come quite a ways in being able to address one into having one phone that can handle 16 different accounts, 30 speed dials with integrated Bluetooth. I think when this phone came out, Bluetooth wasn't even a name when it came out. So it goes to show you the evolution of technology as we move forward. Now let's talk about uh, how we kind of divide a lot of these different endpoints together. As I mentioned before, we have units that have audio and video put together. As you can tell, a lot of these units, even from basic indoor intercoms that usually just do to, to push, and you can have a speaker here on the indoor unit, then you have industrial strength uh, type units which actually have hidden cameras that are on the inside with heat fobs as well as a, be able to page and press a button all the way to a higher end that has its own little display. And we have little units that you can actually mount into the wall or flush into the wall, depending on how you want to do it. So we really have a flavor that meets all different types of solutions like that. For applications, which is audio only, we also have units that just support audio only, as you see here. We have units here that reflect single button, dual button, as well as items here that we actually exempt uh, cameras. And obviously with these things you can define, ask yourself, you have indoor units, you have industrial units, as well as ruggedized or outdoor units that are really fully compliant with IP65, which really sets a base standard of being able to be water resistant, dust resistant, et cetera. They're made to take a beating. So, you know, it's very difficult to identify what all these different model numbers are, but you could kind of associate one model with the other, just based on the type of application you're looking for, the, you know, where it will be placed, and as well as decide whether you want something basic indoor, outdoor, and the type of access you're looking for. Okay. Now let's dig a little bit deeper in terms of the actual intercom systems. Uh, this is really our basic intercom, where it's, it has the actual uh, square module, but you'll find that, that it actually has one button or two buttons, depending on what your application is. You may want to put a single button. This could sort of apply in a, in a hospital scenario where right now you have a lot of, a lot of um, uh, beds that actually have a cord that they have to plug into a wall that you'd have to push and it provides an actual button. This one you could actually put on a wall, be able to page someone at the center desk and then they could actually speak to you or if you could put in a, a video camera, they could also see you as well from a one remote spot before they actually come down and, and attend to you. That's great for an indoor scenario. Um, even when you walk into an office building, most of the small to medium sized buildings I see today, you could enter in a building and you all very often see a phone there that says dial these extensions depending on who you're looking for. Well, you could also substitute that by putting an intercom right at the front desk and be able to push that intercom and if you, you can actually have that paid one or two individuals that are right by the door that could provide easy access. And if you're fortunate enough to have a magnetic door, you could also release the door by perhaps opening this key. Again, we have them both for indoors as well as outdoor audio intercom type systems. Let's move on to the next unit. Here where you have video intercom. So now what we've done is just complementing the previous two you have the same indoor unit, but now we actually opened up here and included a video monitor that's located right here for the I-10V, and then be able to put in a camera as well onto these video units. And what I wanna show moving forward is that these video units can actually handle extreme temperatures, which is one of one of uh, Fanville's greatest differentiators. We have units that can actually handle anywhere from minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 178 degrees Fahrenheit on the high end. So depending on which uni unit you choose, each one actually has can handle a lot of different scenarios. Let's talk about the audio door phone, for instance, okay? Now with the audio door phone, it could adapt. If, you're, if you already have an existing RFID, you can adopt your RFID and use this card reader to really read in 
your existing RFID to save you time. Or what you can do is you can actually have a key access for a guest. You can actually tell them what the rolling uh, key access to go in and as well as be able to provide an intercom access. This is more of an industrial or commercial type of linkage, whereas here provides the same access, but actually provides a much thicker guard to be able to handle outdoor, or you could handle it during the rain. It wouldn't really matter, but then it provides you the capability of being able to provide video integration. Now, I do want to share that not only is video good, but if, for those who have actually attended my webinars on the IP phones, on the high end, on the high end X6U phones, which is something that we released, that phone actually has uh, an H264 video codec, which gives you VGA capabilities and being able to integrate the, the video within this monitor, as well as any external IP camera as well into the phone, which gives you a lot, a lot of flexibility into one end unit. Okay. Let's move on to the next unit. Same thing here, video door phones, but we added this new one, which provides a lot of uh, key feedback. You know, these things really are really helpful when you look at um, a residential units. Very often, uh, people don't necessarily uh, understand or look at door units when they go in and they say, all right, you could key in, you know, their, their apartment number or some name and be able to display a screen. As I mentioned earlier on my menu, one of the new things that we're going to do is be able to do a display. We have small displays as well as large displays, which I'll show in the future. But either one of those displays will actually can show you um, the capability of being able to, 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 to look up on a menu to see what apartment buildings based on name sorts, et cetera. So all of those tools uh, will be available under one roof. Let's talk about the SIP paging endpoint. Uh, this is one of my favorite units uh, that, I, that I like to go ahead and market. And when people upgrade from an analog system into SIP, one of the items that people really ignore is the ability to address the distant parking lot systems, right? Now, when you look at the parking lots as well as PA systems, all of those things used to communicate back and forth over analog, but when you upgrade it, what do you do? You know, you'd like to be able to dial an extension or have a quick access code to reach there to talk to a, a, a microphone. But in reality, you can use this unit right here to be able to convert, uh, you know, your old system and be able to hook this system into an existing power amplifier that runs a bunch of loudspeakers. And that gives you the capability of being able to leverage a lot of the hardware that's already working in the place while minimizing the cost of the actual project owner. So in that case, it's a win-win scenario. I'll talk a little bit more about this in the future. Like take, for example, when you look at this picture here, the elevator, right? Because the elevator used to talk over an analog line in the past, you don't want to necessarily replace your elevator. What you want to do is to be able to access this code via SIP so that what you can do is integrate this little mini adapter or gateway so that you can change this analog speaker into a, a an actual SIP based system just by using this gateway. In addition to the PA2, we also sell a kit. And what does this kit include? This kit includes a speaker, a microphone, a button, as well as a little mini camera. And what that does, it gives you the pieces so that you can upgrade any piece that you want on the other side to work uh, in, in a new SIP environment. And that's a nice little handy option that just plugs right into our PA2 that gives you the capability of being able to do that upgrade. Here's what that indoor unit that's come, that I mentioned earlier, it's being able to sort of close end on not only the entrance point, but when you look at the inside of your building, you could look at a 51 that sees a little mini camera to see who's in front of the door. And you could use any of these buttons to be able to access and open the door from either the front office, the front reception area, or even downstairs at, at the receiving area. You know, we have, you know, displays in different sizes, including a very large one. You know, you can have something like this that displays apartment numbers based on the first letter of the person's last name, et cetera. All of these things can be used just to, so that you can kind of see and sort where you're coming soon. So these, you know, keep on the lookout and we'll make a social announcement when these products are available. 
Now let's talk about applications. Now, when you talk about applications, uh, these are nice units, but let's see where these things end up going. Now, one of the things I mentioned earlier was the nurse's call. I don't want to reinvent the wheel, but you could see as an access point, when you look at the I-10 or I-10B, you can really reach across and, and address many things. Public broadcasting, you know, you, you're leaving a project, you may have upgraded their phones, but there are other things that you might be able to reach into, like upgrading their, their, their public broadcasting as well. But moving a little bit more to uh, the phone in terms of access, some people require visual or actually having an alarm to address loud noises. You could be in a loud warehouse where you need both visual as well as an audio uh, ringer that, that perhaps your phone or any phone for that matter can't address. So you can actually use these adapters to bring this, this, this paging or this calling ability into it. Access control is primarily security as well as industrial and home villa. That calls on to a different door accesses system. But in either case, we're going to probably show you some of the different projects on how all of these technologies are migrating uh, into our marketplace. Let's just start off with a place called Amazon Go. This is a very interesting and growing in the United States. How often do you actually show up? Now, people who actually have done food shopping in their local supermarket, most people, including myself, when you basically walk into a supermarket, you go in with a crisp, with a shopping list, you go and pick out what you want, you can pick out your lunch, your soda, and the only time you really interact with a person is really having that person take your check, your book, and making sure everything matches, and then you could just go out the door. Well, we've actually found, many people have found stores that manage that level of access. When you go in free form, and really, these stores are unattended for the most part. You can go in and basically use access control, um, and it's always monitored with video security. So when you go in and there's any issues, you can actually have one or two people remotely managing several different stores on the outside. Now, for many people who have actually walked into a Home Depot, you'll find that Home Depot has actually opened up self-checkout. That's sort of like an interim step between allowing people to be able to walk in and buy one or two products like a hammer or a drill and be able to check out all by themselves. And if you notice, I noticed on my aisle in my where I live, it has gone from four to six. And you can tell that that you know people who buy one item shouldn't necessarily hold up, be held up by people buying a full grocery cart full of things. So it's optimizing the whole flow in and out of supermarkets, the whole idea as it's stated on here is no lines and no checkout, which is pretty much deemed the highest value in visiting these type of places. So very nice access. Why do I bring this up? Because very often in international scenarios, uh, in the case in, in South Korea, there is a chain of convenience stores that actually deploy Fanville to do something very similar. You know, to access a remote store, you actually have here a door access unit, which I showed earlier, being able at the gate. So you can actually give a person a show an ID card if they're a member of the store, or in you can actually have video units that not only see if, if only one person entered in, or you could tell and interact with just using the intercom on multiple people to enter in. And then, of course, you have something that's interactive from a help desk as well. And this chain, as well as many other chains internationally, has sort of defaulted onto Fanville. And, you know, it's, it's one of many applications that, that, that will tend to grow. Now, I do want to say that in a classic supermarket type of application, when I see here or retail outlet, one thing I've noticed is that as I'm doing a self-checkout, when I'm buying a container of milk or about to buy a dozen eggs, there is an intercom right in the front should you need any help. You know, a lot of times people don't know how to do broccoli because that's done by weight, et cetera. But then yet you have an intercom scenario that you used in there, or that's going to end up growing as well in the retail marketplace where you actually have speakers as well as intercoms talking in the front desk. And then in the monitoring center, as I mentioned earlier, we actually have phones that you can program all of these different buttons to monitor each one, or you can have a bunch of different monitors separately to, to monitor all of the different things that go on at the same time. Again, with parking lots, same thing, you know, in terms of having, you know, the, a gateway entry, you can use intercoms to talk to parking lots. 
in most cases. So depending on what your application is, we have an endpoint that will likely fit uh, your particular project scenario. Now let's talk about apartments. Um, I recently uh, attended a very big high rise over in Miami, Florida recently. And I noticed the perfect scenario where, you know, I had a, a key access code where I can come into the front desk access a code which gets me into the lobby and then you could use another key access to enter into the elevators and this is kind of where everything was centrally managed whereas you can go ahead and do it here and inside the actual apartment you could actually ring the person upstairs and into the multiple apartments see who it is up front and authenticate who that person is click a door and then you actually have full access inside the actual building uh, this is probably one of the largest segments where intercoms are going into as well in the residential building or multi-dwelling units. Let's talk about uh, remote parking in the intercom. I refer to this very often because, you know, let's take a hotel scenario. You know, very often when you're upgrading a hotel into SIP, very often these hotels have these gates where people go in and park their cars. Now, just because you move up to SIP, does a hotel have to have to buy a brand new lift gate because they do that? No, what they can do is they can open up and drill a new hole or adapt that speaker system to speak SIP. And then we actually have the kit as well as the optional uh, kit that goes along with the PA2 to be able to adapt that particular unit to work with the new system. So, you know, and you can assign that to one of the speed dial keys of the, of the phone that I showed earlier so that you can actually go ahead and do the alarm. So you can set these things to, to express an intercom to the front desk, have a visual alarm if possible, or even just do emergency consultation. You know, my, my ticket didn't work or my checkout card didn't work. All of these things are available before as an analog system, but then now you can go ahead and actually modify that system to work uh, on an existing system. Here's a system that kind of, Kind of illustrates from a, a camera perspective and what you find here. You, you can use one of our phones as well as a monitor to go ahead and take a look at it. You can have an operator that works it and then you can have a community of which one of them is a, is a supply but the great news is that you could also integrate third-party IP cameras that work alongside with our technology as well. Management center, this is just if you have a simple operation of just looking at one window, you can use that looking at our phones. Or in many cases, you can hand it over to a mobile phone or a ha handheld, depending on what system they decide to use. Of course, you have campus security. You know, in this case where very often you have, uh, you know, emergency scenarios, uh, especially here when you have to talk about kiosks, where security is really the key. You know, unfortunately, recently I was broadsided in a, in a bad auto accident. And the funny thing is I typically am pretty proactive and have, okay, this is what I call for roadside assistance. But once you get banged up or when you're in an emergency, all that pre-done pre goes right out the door. And they just want an easy button to push for access in case of emergency. And you could really broadcast your, 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 your thing going into a central market, in a library, in a playground, classrooms, et cetera and have it all monitored in either a central security office or perhaps in the, in the security office within your school, depending on what your uh, location is. Let's just talk about the interaction here. The same thing where you can actually have these systems be mounted on a, a remote kiosk. This could be in a parking lot to sort of give your clients and then you some level of security so that they can reach emergency when they have to. Now, one of the things we show here very often is the C600. We use this primarily because it's a phone that actually has a large display. To give you a little heads up, within about, a, within about two months or so, we're going to actually go through an upgrade that's going to actually have a really bi-directional Android phone that's going to fit in a much larger phone. But that's to be, discussed, that's to be um, shown as well. So eventually, when you look at this, the eventual uh, Android phone will, will eventually replace this. That's just kind of a heads up uh, uh, announcement. Beyond the school, we'll talk about train station. Again, this was a station that actually implemented Danville, where they actually had analog lines running into the box. So you figure, all right, what do I do to really retrofit those analog lines and retrofit the box? 
you can actually take a box like this, use a PA2 as long as a PA2 kit and be able to really put in a button and be able to see in video and talk to the central operator where they can actually see who's actually at the station in case they need to call for help. All of these scenarios really do it. And I'm glad that uh, hopefully with this, these applications, our, our, you know, our ability to provide solutions into the marketplace becomes a lot more obvious uh, for my partners. Here, you can see in a railway station, anybody who actually sells phones uh, for a living will recognize a very simple diagram where you can have an IP PBX or perhaps even a hosted PBX that can combine all of these things. And you're right. These are nothing more than endpoints that reside behind it. If you know how to deploy phones, deploying intercom systems will sort of be second, you know, will be an easy guess for you. And for those that are into security, you already know what the marketplace is for this, and then you can actually merge into and be able to expand your marketplace and to be able to sell it to phones accordingly. Now, one of the last things I wanna talk about is being able to address city environments. Now, you know, cities, as you can tell, this is especially true in England, especially in New York City and many of the urban areas, you find cameras everywhere. What I wanted to say is that very often you get the visual, but if you want to add audio onto it as well, a lot of our intercoms could actually interface to these external cameras so they can operate as one. So not only do you actually have, you know, an existing video application, but you could also add audio and being able to uh, asynchronously address audio alarms when someone needs help at a corner, they can push it. And not only are you getting video recording, but you're also getting an audio monitoring as well. Uh, have another type of service you can provide to the marketplace. Again, intercom to the city, these are the little pieces that you can do. In some very remote cases, you can have a Wi-Fi 5G router that connects you know, your remote location into whatever main computer system there is. You know, that's how flexible you want, but that's more so for the person designing the network system and putting that together. Now, last but not least, you know, why Fanville? One of the things that Fanville, you know, pride itself on is that we've been selling phones into a lot of the complicated markets, uh, as well as uh, hosted systems. And what we do most of the time is being able to be interactive with a lot, lot of the most popular PBX and hosted PBX systems out there. Now with our intercoms, very often, they very much share the same technology as our phone. So when these things get, in, get uh, qualified, these things should plug in without any problems. A lot of our competitors out there, they concentrate on working on these devices, but you also have the ability to know that if you happen to have any one of these PBXs, you could be rest assured that at least half the equation of being able to be SIP compliant would be very much met. And not only do we have phones as well as having these endpoints and, and PBX technologies tied in, we also have a, 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 a fan build management system that ties all of these systems together so that for those who are very, very in need of being able to deploy templates, you can actually use this unit to deploy templates and have your settings auto deployed throughout the marketplace. That's kind of it for what I have as far as an overview. Um, you know, it's about 30 minutes that I spent. And what I want to do is be able to ask anybody who wants to put in any questions. You know, this is the time that I'll set aside to be able to address any questions that the audience might have. Um, okay, one question that came in uh, is what do you need to connect that SIP unit? Now, SIP really goes across typically Cat5 cable. Now, depending on what endpoint you use, when you open up the actual uh, intercom system, some might have an internal ethernet connection from the physical hardware, but what you might be able to do is be able to cut that and be able to connect it manually. So from a physical perspective, for those who are very phone-centric, everybody has a physical uh, RJ45 connector on the, on the back of their phone, but on an, an intercom, you have to kind of connect these units manually because depending on what building you go into, all of these units come down to an endpoint and then you just have to basically connect the colors and almost deploy that manually. Uh, do your built-in camera support on VIF? Now, 
I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily show what I know what on VIF is, but what I will do is I will get a, uh, you know, Sam, if you could send me an email on this, uh, on your email, I'll go ahead and address that, uh, that, that, that question for you and be able to get back to you on that particular one, because I don't know what that is. I'm more of a phone guy than I am an intercom guy, but, you know, following this unit, for those who may have came on late, Following this overview, we're actually going to have a three-stage training program. Stage one meeting, sort of teaching people sort of basic IP, and, and as you go into level two and level three, all of these lower-level detail questions will become a lot more evident, and this is something that we're going to provide as a kind of a training program uh, for, our, for our partners out there. Uh, let me see. Uh, we have... Uh, how well we can understand uh, we're able to uh, customers that Fanvo will fully support yeah yeah one person asked if it's supported on 3cx absolutely all of our 3x uh u units will be able to be supported on it um you know that's not a question at all uh how do we get access to the management software um you can go ahead and send uh, a request identifying who you are um, the company you're with and send it to, instead of sales at fanville.com, I suggest to send it to support at fanville.com. And if you're already a partner, we provide that free of charge and you'll be able to be granted a username as well as a, um, a password to give you uh, the management system to be able to allow you to toggle back and forth. And then once you decide to go forward with it, we can go ahead and hand you a key. And it's a tool that we provide to our partners so that you can, you know, deploy templates and be able to, to uh, send our units out, you know, at a much faster rate. Uh, let me see. How about devices like horns, lights? Can you supply us with these? Uh, no, unfortunately, we don't necessarily have the horns and lights. Uh, but typically, when you know, with the lights, it'll it'll kind of work on any lights that you would find. Uh, some people use strobe lights. But you know, our endpoints kind of end where SIP ends. You know, that's a great way to think on where Fanville kind of puts the breakpoint. So where the SIP stops, that's kind of where we stop. Um, very often, when it comes to those, you know, third-party LEDs, you know, red LEDs might work for one application, and then you might have strobe lights that work for others. So no, you're going to have to probably look for a third party that provides those type of peripherals that meet your specific applications. Um, let me see. Uh, for that SOS, you have an SOS unit at the train station. Do you have to run a Cat5 cable to the PBX? Yeah, I mean the PBX actually is 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 remote. You could actually have that PBX. It has to, in essence, be on the network. Uh, what that means is you have to almost treat that little box as though it's part of your network. So even though it ran. Now, there's a lot of technology out there that might be able to use analog cables that, that were a much smaller gauge, and you might be able to convert that into work with Cat5. I'm not saying that you can do it, but I know that the technology exists so that you might be able to save some copper wires if, if indeed the length is compliant enough to do that. But conversely, when you convert over to Cat5, you also have to worry about the 300-foot maximum length as well. So in either case, you still have to kind of use your network knowledge and being able to deploy a network like you would deploying a network in a large office building as well. Okay. So that's kind of what I have for now. Um, I want to thank for all the appreciation. I want to thank you for your time as well. If you have any questions that you want to address to me one-on-one, -on -one, please send it to sales at fanville.com or you could send it to me directly at Tommy, T-O-M-M-Y dot Lee at Fanville.com. If I don't have the answers for you, I can easily uh, address that uh, on the side and get you that, 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 that answer for you as well, okay? Anyhow, that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you. You could also download a soft copy of this presentation too on the handouts. So feel free to search your client. You'll be able to download this for, for free. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call, all right? Again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Take care.